Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought the second part of Vibrant. We talked about living beyond ourselves. And we really took a look at using our gifts and serving. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. Glad to have you back here today. Thanks. And we had quite a few uh, questions come in Good. really around gifting. Um, sure. So let's just start there. Okay. You talked a lot about determining our gifts and using our gifts mm -hmm. um, that we've been given. And so this question is, do some people have multiple gifts or do you just have a gift? Yeah. Well, you certainly have at least a gift. But I think we can safely say that many people have a gift or two. In one of the sermons, uh, one of the, I think the early service today, I mentioned uh, a gift that I have of leadership and another gift of preaching. I would say the leadership one gives me a little more energy than the preaching one. So that would probably be my strongest one. Um, and if I had to... to uh, say my third one, if there's a third, I'd say it's evangelism. I really love to try to help people come to an understanding of Jesus. Um, so I think, uh, I think we can safely say um, more than one, typically, but at least one. Now, I'll say a couple of other things about that. Of course, in the spring, we'll come back and we'll spend another Sunday or two, and we maybe will have some sort of uh, little self-test that one can take that sort of you add up the points and it kind of helps. But any of those inventories that you'll find, and you can look up online and probably find some good ones, they all um, are predicated upon you having some experience trying some different things. Mm -hmm. So if you just sit in a vacuum and then you try to take a spiritual gift inventory, you 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 can't really mm -hmm. say yes, I do this all the time or sometime or never um, with much confidence. And so there again, that's where I was emphasizing you, you, you got to get in the game and just start trying some things and then you'll gravitate there and, uh, by God's grace. I'll say one other thing that I've noticed over the years uh, with credit to a, to a friend of mine who, who actually articulated this one time. And, but it made sense the, the moment he said it said, you know, the older I get, the more gifts I have. And I started laughing. And said, what do you mean? He says, well, back when I was a brand new Christian and I'd fill out one of those spiritual gift inventories, I had one or two. And, but by the time you've been in ministry for years and years and you start a church and this and that, you've, you've had to mop the floors, you've had to do everything. <laughs> so when you take those little spiritual gift inventories, you kind of have check marks by a lot of them and you could, I think, errantly think, well, I've got about 10 or 12 spiritual gifts. That would be the other extreme um, wrong answer to this question. Um, and that is thinking, well, I just have all the gifts. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you, you might, if you've journeyed with Christ a long time and done a lot of ministries, you've probably had to do a lot of things, but probably deep down in your soul is one or two, maybe three charisms that God has put there. And those are always gonna be your strongest uh, spiritual gift. Gotcha. Okay, so the second part uh, of this question that they ask is, do our gifts develop or change as our relationship with the Lord deepens or as we mature? Sure. So, well, I, I'll illustrate with myself. Um, when I went to seminary after graduating from college, I had this heart for evangelism, wanted to help people come to trust in Christ. And, and then I took some preaching classes and won a preaching award and realized, you know, I think I can actually preach a sermon. And, but it wasn't until I was serving at the uh, church up in the Woodlands for five years that then I was put in responsibility of a lot of different people and a lot of different ministries. And I began to realize um, people follow me when I walk across the room, and that's a gift of leadership. Well, that would really become the, the most important gift when you're starting a church, 
uh, the gift of leadership. And so it took some years for me to discover really that that's my, that's my top spiritual gift. I've also heard people say, uh, who are older and wiser than I am, that sometimes perhaps God gives a gift for a season when uh, perhaps you hear about a missionary who's put in a circumstance in a foreign country and they just by default, there's no other Christians there, God, you know, puts into the person for that season, mm -hmm. that charism yeah. to get them through uh, whatever they're you know, going through. So I don't know that I have so much a, many illustrations from that one myself, but it rings true as I think, um, th there is some subjectivity to this whole spiritual right, gift. Right, because the Holy thing. Spirit, you exactly. don't know how he's gonna work. So we can't, exa no matter point. how you yes. put the, the little inventories together. Because the there are some natural abilities. Sure, yes. yeah. And, and that's, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. So where does the, my natural mm -hmm. abilities end? And then the Holy Spirit step in there. And yeah. one of the things we're looking at in Grow Groups this week is taking one of those <laughs> tests, but then also looking okay. at the body and doing some of that in community where people can yes. see gifts in you that you may not necessarily see, see in yourselves. Which is a big um, thing. Yes, great. Yeah. Okay, so um, just around serving and how that impacts our lives, this question came in around how it impacts our internal lives. Mm. So do people have better eternal lives because of how they serve? Yeah. Yeah. You. Uh, well, according to what Paul is saying there in Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, um, our works are going to be tested by fire and rewards are going to be dispensed. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting concept because I think probably in American Christianity, we have uh, in our concern to make sure that we're never leading people towards salvation through works. We are always talking about salvation by grace through faith, which is absolutely biblical, and we're saved by what Christ did, not by what we do. I think, though, that we could accidentally be accused of throwing out the baby with the bathwater as if to uh, indicate to people that, therefore, nothing you do ever matters. Well, no, apparently it, it will, not for your salvation, because there'll be some, it says, who will be saved, but as those just barely escaping us through the flames. Um, and then there's others who will d d just be loaded down with the blessings of reward from all that they did in accordance with uh, Ephesians 2.10, uh, where God's workmanship created uh, to, to do good works through him. And so, you know, I'm thinking of a little book uh, that came out, I don't know, a decade or two ago by, uh, what is his name? Bruce Wilkerson, um, The Life God Rewards, which is on that con this, this whole uh, concept. It might be, an, be a good resource. It's a, it's a little coffee table book, but you can read it fast. But that'll give you a little, little more if you want to delve into that. Okay, good. And uh, little, another question looking at the, the testing of fire. Um, mm. Are only living people at the time of the return of Christ tested in fire? No. That's the question. No, we, we will all uh, s s s go before the, the Bema seat. Um, now, the sequence of that, uh, the how and the when, theologians will come down to different points. But no, uh, not, not just the people who are alive when he comes back. All, of us All right. To forward to that. <laughs> okay, so um, this was just a comment that was sent in, but we had lots of these comments in it that people identify with your crayon box and the OCD. OCD, yes, great, box. great. Well, of course, <laughs> hey, now there, let's remember there's a good, it's, so if you have those tendencies, you probably have a good gift of administration. That is a spiritual gift like the Lady Christie that I uh, alluded to in the, in the message. So use that gift. Um, as Paul says in Romans 12, where he's hitting some of the spiritual gifts. Um, use that gift that God has. Uh, has so if, if you're OCD, put it to work for God's kingdom and 
get some things organized and administrated. Love that story. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you for joining us here for Postscript. It was a great message today. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.